Welcome back, and so the goal for this week, or at least one of them, was to uh, get this uh, main spa um, post cured in the oven. So here you can see um, Jeff's basically uh, putting the fan back in there with the new relay system on there. And we have the uh, controller that arrived, and so a digital controller. So we've been figuring out the programming and stuff for that because it was one of these ones that came from China with no instructions. But anyway, he managed to figure it out. and. Uh, so here we are just prepping to do a quick test before we run um, the, the final bake or the final post cure for uh, the main spa. And again, it's still makeshift this oven, but it's working great and it hasn't cost us hardly anything to put together. And here you can see the controller, so just starting out. So the temperature that on the top one there, that's the, the ambient temperature inside and we have a, a probe going in the side wall there. And uh, there's the relay there. And you see the red light means that the um, heater and the fan is on and it was going for 80 degrees uh, that's celsius by the way so uh, here's some of these uh, ribs that i printed over the weekend and redid the ones that we had the problem with and that now i've gone and put a nice little radius on the bottom edge there so the guys just put some super glue on there and glued them into place and putting the rubber profile around there to prep them and right after that they put the top coat down or at least the first layer of that just around there and you you know mostly you've seen this before basically that's the first stage in uh, creating the mold for that uh, particular part and um, so we'll see how those turn out okay so it's time for me to start cutting some uh, piping for the turbo system and this is the first one here this is the three inch uh, stainless steel 321 stainless for um, the first transition from turbo one to turbo two and i needed um, 24 degrees cut there so there it is basically the result there use that little jig that I created last week there and you can see it's got that uh, v-band flange just sitting there so that'll have to be welded up and so that's the 24 degrees there in my right hand and the other bit was a 90 because ultimately I needed 114 degrees altogether and I only got 90s um, that were shipped out that they didn't have uh, 180s so I had to sort of do it in two pieces and they're just showing on the screen there that's the part that we're creating there so it's basically coming out on the top half of the screen they're coming out of the first turbo and they're going into the second turbo and so it has a v-band on the top there and then a flange on the bottom so this is similar this flange here is similar to what i have but i've ordered a larger one so this is a t3 and i've ordered a t4 transition so we're going to get a better mating thing from the larger three inch to the smaller opening there and let me show you how this turbo wastegate works. So this is the intake there for one of the turbos. And as you can see, there's a big hole in the side there. And that's where uh, any extra pressure can be relieved and, and basically bypass the turbine wheel. And uh, so you can see this, this little fixture here that bolts on there and sort of sits there and has a little trap door kind of set up there. And that has an actuator on the side here. And you'll see, I'll show you how that works. Basically, um, I'm just lining up there so it looks good yeah and so the actuator there kind of opens that door it doesn't open that far it only opens it a little bit when it's actually running and so how it works is that there's basically um, this um, little actuator that I'll show you here and that has a hose that hooks up to it from the intake side of the engine and if there's too much pressure building up in the intake it'll actually push that rod out there which will open up that um, door and relieve pressure from the hot side of the turbo so it's a really um, ingenious little system and, and uh, should work great. And here you can see that's the three inch V-band connector there. So that's how that'll hook up to the outlet from the first turbo. And of course then that 90 will get the other 24 degrees added to it for 114 degrees. And then the intake um, little adapter and then onto the second turbo. And I also did some work today on the intercooler. So I cut off um, an inch and a half off those intake pipes because they were too long. And we're going to actually weld on some radiuses in there that'll make it fit better under the intake um, cowling. And so this is the bracket there. That bracket's going to be welded on to the radiator. Obviously, the, the uh, intercooler's up the wrong way right now. We flipped over. And these are rear brackets. And those um, one part of that will be welded on to the intercooler here. And I'll show you kind of how that'll sit just like that and then the other part there will be welded on to uh, the radiator and just using a sort of rubber kind of grommet there to provide a little bit of shock cushioning between the two systems not for any particular reason just because it uh, helped me sort of pad things out and get the right dimensions there and of course I'll be using bolts that are shorter than that with locking uh, nuts on those so anyway that's uh, something that needs a bit more welding so I'm getting together some stuff for Brett now 
And these are the hydraulic cylinders that came in that we ordered uh, for the landing gear legs. So there's three of those, uh, you know, obviously one for each of the mains and one for the nose gear as well. So pretty simple, straightforward, and they should do the job. Um, and they're, you know, double acting, so uh, good for what we need. And I've been meaning to show you again, this is the main gear legs back from the powder coater, which is a couple of weeks ago now, or at least a week ago. Um, so there you can see they've got that uh, black satin finish on there, which is going to look pretty nice. Uh, so happy about how they turned out, and actually a really reasonable price, the place that does that. So here you see the guys are uh, putting down the first layer of uh, glass on those, um, those um, plugs, or those moulds. So we'll see how those ones turn out. They'll be putting the uh, heavy layers on there tomorrow and then we'll pop them and uh, we'll see exactly how well they turn out. But um, I'm hopeful that it's gonna work out for all the ribs for that. And uh, lastly, here we see the uh, controller there running. It's uh, 79 degrees inside the oven at Celsius, so about 180 degrees Fahrenheit and it's set for 80 degrees there. And we're gonna bake it all the way through um, till, pa till past uh, midnight tonight which will basically give it a 12 hour soak in there and there you can see the little red light is on for uh, the relay there and it's set there so when it gets to uh, 81 degrees I believe it is it'll click off again and then when it drops down to 78 uh, it'll click back on so uh, the good thing about this is that spa should be uh, all baked by tomorrow and then it's time to start getting it sorted out so we can bond it to the aft bulkhead and uh, then the process begins of um, bonding the rest of the stuff the fuselage together and there you can see the relays clicked off there because uh, it got to 81 degrees and this is our other thermocouple there showing there 190 degrees Fahrenheit in there so anyway our ovens working great and uh, things are moving along so that's our update for the first half of this week and thanks again for watching